Rome, the Eternal City. I have seen the end of days. Years from now, men will say, Here began the fall of Rome. Alright geeks, Unite the Clans here, back in your life with another episode of Total War Attila in Chapter 2 of our campaign as the Picts and our goal to unite Britannia under a Celtic High King. It's a big place, we're barely getting started, uh, and this, ideally, is the High King we will unite under. This is Andy. Uh... The Picts are the children of the night, and actually right now, uh, so am I. It's around 6.30 in the morning. Um, I really love being up this time of day. I feel the most creative some of my days off. I sleep in weird chunks. I didn't really have a good night's sleep last night. I just kind of was working on some stuff late and then crashed for a few hours. So I'm up now, which gave me the difficult decision of what beverage I should enjoy while playing this because I plan on going to bed right after. So, uh, you know, coffee seems a little crazy. Uh, and accordingly, so did orange juice. I looked at orange juice, I looked at beer. I didn't really want to drink a beer at 6 in the morning, so I went dead center, right down the middle. Stiegel Rattler. If you haven't had a Rattler, it's like half beer, half citrus juice, grapefruit, and lemon, and orange. They're amazing. I could drink them all day long. So, uh, it's only 2%, so in my mind, it doesn't really count as drinking. I'm going to have a sip right now. Yep. But if you want to be technical, yes, I am drinking at 6.30 in the morning. And speaking of being technical, um, I feel like a real YouTuber now. I got some technical advice from a few people after episode one. Uh, and uh, one private message via YouTube and another via Twitter. And I just wanted to let you geeks know from the very bottom of my heart that you're completely wrong. Uh, my strategy was absolutely perfect in episode one. Uh, on the battlefield, I did not lose any more men than necessary. And when it comes to campaign strategy, I did not almost bankrupt the Pictish kingdom by raising an obscenely large force, uh, way more than was necessary to sack these Caledonian dogs here. Uh, at Isle of Dawn. Uh, I did not do that. And I do not need your advice. Ever, I am a tremendous commander. And actually what you should do is just stop sending me so many messages and just watch so many messages. What am I talking about? I got two. You guys should stop messaging me and just watch and learn from a true master of the Total War series. Uh, okay, I'm kidding. Please, if you have advice, give it to me, guys. I suck. I suck at all video games. Uh, at the end of my last video, I had a little bit of audio trouble. But I wanted to pose a couple questions to you guys. It's too late now. I'll have to figure out the answer myself. The questions were, uh, one, uh, how do we upgrade uh, Andy here? He's got a what, one skill point? I thought you get two. Did I already? Uh... You should get two. Very weird. Uh, okay, so we get to upgrade Andy here. And then the big question was one of strategy. I like how I just told you guys to shut up. Now I'm asking for advice. My question was whether we cross the Mara Hagbernicum and betray our Celtic brothers in the Abdanians, uh, or do we march south of, uh, of Hadrian's Wall right here and, uh, and feast on the flesh of the bloated hogs that are the Western Roman Empire at Aboricum. I have got an incredible taste for pork right now, but this city is in trouble. Um, I don't know. It might take me a couple turns before I can even make that decision because look, we're in some rough shape here. We need to get Isle done. 
up and running. We got Plague at two Aces. What is it? Consumption or some nonsense. So, so, uh, we'll, we'll figure that one out. But let's, uh, get ourselves started and see if we can, uh, see if we can upgrade Andy here. I think the way to go, morale, public order. Cutting is less useful as the picks because you're not working towards unlocking night battles, but I mean, that's a pretty good deal. Yeah, let's go with cunning. And for some reason, we only have one. Very strange. Maybe it's just not that good. Or maybe they've changed the game. Or maybe it was always that way and I just didn't understand. Uh, I'm curious though, actually, from a diplomacy perspective, if we can sh should consider breaking our uh, non-aggression. It affects your trustworthiness over here, uh, but not so much as just uh, breaking it by betraying someone. Uh, you know, I'm really not quite sure the way to go. There's a good pork roasting for you, and better ale and mead set aside. But first, huh. talk. So we have to wait eight turns. All right. Well, maybe maybe that gives us a timeline for taking Ablana there, and we'll just focus our attempt on the Romans. And eight turns from now, maybe we'll have a fleet, uh, or or maybe we'll have earned some uh, military access, and we can just have an army waiting outside the city. Not yet. We'll get there. We get there. Alright, so let's consider a march south. And if we're going to do that, I think one army will do it. Because we have the power of night attacks, we can take our strongest against their strongest. So I say we just try and get a beefy, beefy force here, if we can manage it. Um, so, oh, with that in mind, maybe. Hmm. Yeah, when we can... I mean, we're going to do the research for Woodcarver, that way we can build our own artillery. That will make life easier. Uh, and uh, the upkeep cost of mercenary onagers is ridiculous after the latest update, so we'll, we'll try and get our own. Uh, so that's step one, is to do that. Uh, so we need some research. We need get your, get that out of here. Nordic shipbuilding techniques, which we're working on. Uh, so that's a couple turns away, three turns away maybe. Yeah, so in three turns we'll do that. We'll build a, yeah, so let's just hammer through some quick turns here. We'll see if we can do some recruiting uh, and maybe recruit a second army to follow us down from the north. We'll do that in a couple turns. Let's not go crazy yet. Uh, I'm going to get, I'm going to beefen up our front, beefen? <laughs> Is beefen a word? I'm gonna beef up our front line. A couple more of these. It's a good life. Um. Death in battle. There is no finer ending. Yeah, I guess we'll have to keep up in the cav too. Us, yeah, I mean we'll still be in good shape come next turn. So I say we do that. We can't do a fourth, I don't think. Good okay. So let's uh, let's do that, and uh, I think. Um, yeah, warrior rights. So this is for the whole province of Caledonia and Hibernia, which is two Aces Island on and Ablana. And we can, uh, we get additional, um, research rates and unit experience. I think that's the way to go. And then we'll switch to this when it does come time to build, um, turn after next. Oh, where are you going, you Caledonian? God. Whole. Oh. They're camping out in our hood here. We, we made a peace treaty with them because I didn't want to expend the resources on hunting them down. And now we'll have to potentially break that peace treaty. Um, so we don't have to do a whole lot more. We should have some decent troops now. Yeah, some real frontliners. Uh, I, like I like the feel of that. Uh, so let's... Uh, we're only going to have room for archers and onagers, so maybe the time has come now to raise that second force. We'll do it at Toasis, I think. We uh, should be able to get slightly better troops up here. Well, actually, we'll do it here, and we'll march Andy. For 
north so that he can take advantage of um, the archers and catapults when we do uh, earn the ability to get you out of here. Guys, I haven't played in a little while. I'm feeling rusty. Kazakos, we could bring him back. What happened to Seji? Did he always have that? I don't think he did, man. Foreign interests. What is that? Is that a gay thing? It's the, 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 it's too subtle. I don't know what that means. He has a healthy interest in cosmopolitan matters. Ah. He just likes foreigners? I don't get that. Uh, I don't get that at all. Uh, why is his loyalty ter terrible? Alright, you don't have any to use. Yeah, why don't we just some secure some loyalty here with old wifey. Mom, get this adopted son in line. I don't know what his attitude problem is. And maybe, uh, actually all this loyalty is just crap. Maybe we'll hire someone new. I don't know if we have the cash. We might have to wait a turn. I don't know. We've, we've got it. Yeah, so let's hire someone new. So who is the best of these? We've got uh, 22 years old. Power monger. These guys all have the same stats, cunning, authority, and uh, um, zeal. So it's really just a choice of age. 22 year olds, 23 year olds. I think Akutios might be the way to go. What's a sage do? Amatios. I know power monger gives you personal influence. I don't know if that's a good thing. Let's go with Akutios. Let's raise a reinstate a legacy, the Heralds of Death, with a Kuchos at the helm. And that's actually pretty cheap. Sometimes it's like thirteen hundred just to do that. So uh, he's down here. He can recruit some new forces. A good sort of defensive force is what I'm all I'm looking for at the moment. Um, Yeah, it's a solid, uh, solid first turn there for him. And then, um, I hope these these guys. I do not like you in my lands right now, guys. So you're in the north. We are continuing to uh, replenish, which is good. Uh, so you can just hang out here for a couple of turns, man. Uh, so let's end this one. I'm going to have another sip of my delicious half juice, half beer. Don't judge. Oh yeah, I forgot. We didn't even get to experience this, did we, in the first one? So, when you play as any of the Celtic factions, you've got this little, this little thing here. Uh, the cycle of the Olam Ri. I think these words might mean high king or uh, or something like that. I remember looking them up. Uh, so centuries of oppression and uncertainty have smothered the spirit of the Celtic people, but their glorious past, preserved in legend, provides the last glimmer of hope to a generation seeking a new beginning. At the ancient heart of the island, the young Re departs. Determined to discover the future in store for his people, he will soon find knowledge of it or forget or forge it himself. We have two options for the young Ree. Send him to the lake. The black mirror of its surface reflects mankind's every secret. Head to the forest. The primordial trees promise life to the brave and death to the unwary. So once we've completed this um, little storyline, we get a new general. And he appears in the other nobles. Uh, both our sons are good governors so i'm thinking <clears throat> if we can we'll adopt him in and maybe we'll, we'll think of all these decisions as trying to make a good general uh i didn't get i don't think i got far enough in my little practice run as the picks to see 
what happens. Loyalty secured. Sedgevax should be at a 7 now, and our power and our control are looking good. Control, I always lose, man. Always lose that. So, oh, we also haven't enabled uh, companions. Uh, so these give additional bonuses to uh, to your guys. Recruitment cost down. So we want to make sure we get a Kuchos. Oh, he doesn't have the... Damn. Oh, well. Well, this will help. No, you don't have it either. Okay. Really just you. Casicos we can do. And dummy, we can do. Uh, so, uh, as these guys level up, which they'll do between their experiences here, and as governors and generals, they can move up and up and up. And your high king can never t hold one of these offices, because he's, you know, the high king. Uh, so we're going to save him. I, we're thinking of eventually adopting in the future. So I say we keep his, his stuff high, keep our dominion in good shape, and, um, and save up some... Uh, personal influence on this side of the thing <clears throat> so here we go guys a little more money in the bank our economy isn't looking great let's uh, plan ahead and do that for next turn um, but we'll get one more turn of recruitment I would say are you even in the city you ought to be That feels good. For the tribe. And then Cascos in a... Cascos, what am I talking about? Andy. I'm wondering if we just hire mercenaries. Can we get our hands on an Onager right now? No, we can't. What if we were to march? Ready for battle. Is there nothing else? My own mercenary. Is it changed from region to region, or is it just like the whole province? If so, we could consider moving south of the wall. Move out. The Romans ain't gonna like this. Okay, so we can recruit down here. Um, with that in mind, I'm wondering we have spot for one more guy in our, our army here. Uh, well, let's let's just wait and see, because we can follow down maybe with uh, with uh, Cuchios's guys next turn. I mean, we're leaving our backs to the Caledonian dogs, so uh, I'm not sure it's the wisest move. Well, f soon, soon we'll be able to build uh, in Toasis. We'll be able to build this, and then uh, that'll make our conquests a lot cheaper. So let's end this turn. We should have that new uh, edict in place, which will make the construction of the woodcarver a little cheaper than 3,000. It should be 2,700. Something like that. Booyah. Imperium up. This lets us have more armies, more everything, basically. Ooh. Okay, so we are trying to appoint Cam as a companion. And we've been obstructed by one of our political opponents. So we can forget it, lose control, or Andy can spend that personal influence that I was trying to save. Okay, and again, that's happening. So this time, Casicos, he is not one of our family. He can spend it himself. <coughs> so... The second cycle of the Olamri, the Ri comes across three sons of Twiran, covered in blood, surrounded by villagers. They are accused of slaying Kian, a local king. They beg for mercy, claiming that he had taken the shape of a pig and was unrecognizable. If he lets them go, they claim, he will prove their innocence by retrieving his hide and demonstrating its magical powers. This one it did not come up in my practice one, so I don't know. 
Uh, we don't believe in crazy magic, do we? I mean, we're pagans, but... Hmm. Well, here's my question. is Why is there another king? King, king Andy is the only king around here. So I'm not sure about this decision, but I say they, they killed a pig that these clowns think is a king. They need to respect Andy as the king, so we'll just release them. And Dummy takes the office for himself without anybody's help. Nice job, bud. Thirsty for battle! Your next command. Wonder if we should recruit another unit. Oh, we have better skirmishers now. Does this mean we can't move? Yes, it does mean we can't move. Hmm. Uh, why don't we just give up that horse? And I'm not gonna recruit an unnecessarily large force again, I hope. What happened? Oh, wait, we need to cross the border. Getting on our way. Yes, we do. Oh, I could have hired two onagers, eh? One should be plenty. One should, I believe, should be plenty. They're so expensive. Okay, you guys. Whoa. You guys can retrain. Didn't I see a potential for retraining these two, too? Perhaps not. Okay, so Nordic shipbuilding techniques done. Which, while we've got the cash, do we have the cash? No. So you guys can come south here. On the move, lads. Your next command? For the Just for backup. Oh, actually, yes. Now, this is important. Why don't we just choose one here? I'll take that. Uh, this is important. We could just declare war on Rome. Or we could figure out who Rome's enemies are. Do they have any? The Caledonians. So why don't we offer to our Caledonian brethren? Now speak plainly, for we are an honest folk and value honest in others. So yeah, see? That's very high. They want me to do that. So. Oh, they have some beautiful daughters. She's religious. She's a freak. Oh, you don't want to do that, eh? Well, let's see. What about your, your creepy daughter, Merobia? Success low. What if I give you my daughter? All right, no daughters changing hands here. We'll have to deal with that later. <clears throat> Let's up this. 700 seems about right. Bull. All right, one last chance. Two more chances, I'm thinking. Because I'll just take what I can get. We're going to fight him anyway. Boom. You have spoken fairly, and I can accept for my people knowing that good will come of the day. All right, let's forge a friendship with them. I mean, if I had to choose between the dogs of Caledon and the hogs of Rome, we eat pork. So let's march south with King Andy, High King of the Picts, on a Boracum. All right, so their forces are weak. Somehow the night attack does help us. I don't think this army gets in the action. No, it's just us. 
I wonder if we should spend a turn. Yeah, let's spend a couple turns gearing up here. We take this settlement for the tribe. And with that in mind, maybe we march you guys back to Owl Dawn because that's unnecessary. Uh, next turn, next turn we get back there. Uh, we make no money next turn. Well, well, once we get rid of that mercenary on our economy, we'll be back in business. So let's call. Oh, well, come on, Cam. I know you leveled up from your tremendous work as a governor, but... Okay, so we want to improve him, continue to improve him as a governor. Zeal gives him what? Nothing. But, I mean, that is the wolf is the first step. So we'll give him that, and we'll unlock... See, he got two. We'll unlock this, and maybe we'll go down the, the breathed route with the judge. Raven is good for a governor. Yeah. Sit, yeah, he'll he'll follow kind of a path like this. Um, so yeah, let's do that. And um, and let's uh, we have one more. Attack! Oh, we got a couple more turns of that. Oh, we haven't completed a turn. That's why. You know, guys, I always wish I make a little list of things to talk about during the turn breaks, but they're actually so quick. So, Cycle of the Old Emery, I think this is our last one. So, as promised, the three sons of Tweran return, bearing a bloody pigskin. However, they have paid a heavy price. All three bear mortal wounds. They claim the skin has potent healing powers, and beg the reed to bind their wounds in it. In return, they promise to provide the answer to any question under the sun. You know, I'm a little disconcerted by our last choice. I'm not sure I want to stick with these clowns. And also the pig is like our icon. Look down here. Look at this. That's the thing that gutted them. I'm withholding it. And we'll find out next turn if I've made some horrible choices when the Olam Reed joins our forces. And uh, and he has like all all just like little red things like Sedgevax here. It'll just be terrible. It'll just be garbage. We'll find out how bad. We'll find out how bad of a decision I've made here. So. So let's go one more turn. I want to make sure we've got a good way into the city. So we'll continue the siege. I'm wondering. Upkeep 155, 235. Jeez, you guys are the problem. I know we get good skirmishers, but we don't need that, do we? Should probably not have upgraded those guys. Alright, and if we play our cards right, we'll be able to afford that soon. So let's end another turn. We've got, you know, we're waiting until we can build. So this does at least give us growth until we can take advantage of that. We're close. 2700. We'll get there. Duty calls. Oh my gosh. King Andy Cambodios. King Andy has died. I knew he was old, but and that was really sad. Actually, King Andy with that looks a little bit like my my dad he used to rock a mustache. It's probably been twenty five years. But if he were to have his mustache of old on his face now, he would have actually looked a lot like King Andy. Minus the pagan owl horn, owl wing helmet. Uh, I'm not sure where to go, guys. Sedgevax is the sun. I mean, we've... He's, he should be the way to go. Cascos is, is, good, is good, right? 
No, he's not that good. Nobody's good. Let's just go with our son. Sedge can take the reins. Damn, I don't know how this battle is going to go now. Okay, Cam is the High King. Uh, we've got to make sure that our heir has been named correctly. Okay. So we've earned the Olemri. So let's check out our faction. Here he is. Let's find out how we did. Oh my gosh. I didn't do the best job. So great aura, great fatigue, great charge bonus. So he is a decent attacker. His cunning, well, we can up that. I mean, that sucks, but. So, <laughs> it's just a little incest. You know what it is. So he's an attacker and he's irresolute. Yeah, okay. So we'll have to, I mean, we're going to have to upgrade the guy. Oh man, look at that. This dude sucks. Alright, we'll even see if this guy makes it into our army. So Qtios needs some loyalty. Uh, who is the man? Oh, yeah. Check that out. Cam wears the helmet. I didn't know that. Uh, that makes me want to put him in charge of an army there. So he can, uh, he can rule over the battlefield. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. We need to get him married. He is our high king now. Unless we want our line to die out. Let's let's talk with our friends and with our our enemies. Okay, so this will be good when we do get a navy going. This will be good for some of our cheap troops, the ones I don't like anyway. Oh yeah, maybe we continue this. Yeah. We're besiegers. That's how it works. So, we now have the cash to build this. Alright guys, uh, I haven't thought about how smooth this transition will be, but I should say um, I went to go start editing this episode and I realized my audio was a good bit longer than my video. Uh, and what that means is the recording software I use, uh, I'm just getting the hang of NVIDIA's Shadow Play uh, after using OBS before I got my graphics card, uh, just kind of crapped out right in the middle of the battle. So I have gone back to my previous save game and I've done my absolute best to recreate the situation uh, that we had uh, right before the battle. I have... <laughs> not been perfect um, I will give you a little tour of where we stand so uh, it's the same time it's winter 396 AD I have re-raised the heralds of death under Akutios uh, he's got three Celtic wood runners uh, but there were some things that I didn't do right I forgot to take notes on our decisions on the Olamri we had the Olamri of judgment and he was actually pretty crappy uh, this seems a little cheaty but I actually did a way better job when I was trying to remember what we picked last time. So we actually have the Olamri of Bounty, uh, which makes him great, uh, including as a governor, which wasn't exactly uh, my hope. But uh, I'm thinking uh, if we get the opportunity, we'll adopt him in as a son, which leads me to my second point. Another thing I can't control is some of the random decisions that happen in the game, whether or not someone smoothly slides into the office of companion or uh, how successful securing loyalty is, and more importantly, when people die of naturally causes. So, gloriously, King Andy has returned from the dead. Apologies, uh, I don't, it's not going to seem to make sense, but this is the closest I could get to where we were and still bring you guys a battle at the end of this episode. Um, so, Andy and his wife Vepia are still alive. We've got the sons, and uh, we've got a better Olamri. So, uh, uh, yeah, it is better this time. Uh, a couple things have gone wrong. King Andy, in exchange for his life now, uh, has become flaccid. I'd say fair trade. Uh, you are alive, but your thing don't work. Uh, he's not going to be having any more babies. He's too old. Vepia here is too old. But uh, by the grace of God, they're both alive, and he will get to lead the attack on the Romans. 
So, uh, the other things I've done, guys, uh, I tried to be a little more efficient if in the first part I raised and disbanded some troops or raised them with the Heralds of Death and then transferred them over to uh, the Thunderbolts. I just raised them here. Uh, so I tried to be a little more efficient. I'm sure that saved us a little bit of cash. We still built the Woodcarver into Oasis. It is still under Plague. And research-wise, I went ahead and clicked this one. I just clicked it, so I don't think we even spent a turn doing it. Um, but this will this will continue to allow us to improve our archers and our siege equipment. Which at the moment, the only one we have is a mercenary one. Siege has been on for the same number of turns. And if you look, and if you look, we have the same couple of siege ladders we had last time. We're going head-to-head -head with Firmus, Malius, Cullio. I tell you what, here's one guy that isn't very Firmus right now, now that he's flaccid. Uh, that's, a, that's an arch enemy. This guy's got Firm in his name on the same day that Andy has become flaccid. Uh, you will pay, my friend. Standard Roman uh, uh, garrison, Comitatensis, Cohors, and these are probably Exploratore and... Uh, uh, scout equite so we'll be able to take them out especially if we fight at night so that is my game plan guys um, why don't we just get this thing started so at night in the dead of winter king andy leads the thunderbolts of tyrannus on a boracum seem seem to be having some frame rate issues in these loading screens, which is crazy because I can get almost 60 during the battles. Yeah, I definitely can. So it's at night, and holy crap, I didn't know. I didn't know that every time you build a siege ladder, you get 100 siege ladders. Um, okay, next time, just build one. Four is going to do it. Uh, it's dry, it's nighttime. You can see the torches lighting up a Boracum. Uh, we've done a little bit of da siege damage. I'm freaking ready to go. Guys, I'm just going to get the deployment set, and then I will be right back with you. All right, guys, we are back in business. Why don't we take a look at our deployment? Group one here is all of our men on siege ladders. We've lined up on the side where we have already done the most siege damage. These towers are down. So is this one on the corner. Uh, so the nearest thing of any danger is this. We should be able to march into the city this way, you know, take light fire from these guys, plow through a, a barricade if they put one there, and march right up on this, uh, you know, rebuilt coliseum filled with uh, hovels and houses. We, uh, that is where their general will be hiding. There'll likely be some come at the tents of spears, which we can just utterly destroy. So I've got all my uh, infantry on siege ladders there. I've got King Andy and his honor guard lined up here. Uh, I've got two groups of archers, these guys here and these guys here. So and we've got our Jav Cav, our, uh, our Celtic Cavalry Raiders at the back. And right down here, I have got our artillery. And I can keep them super close. They should be able to just obliterate that gate. Hopefully closer is better. Let's give this thing a go. Man, with no towers, we got nothing to worry about. We will crush the enemy with our greater numbers. Fire! Weapons Boom. Let's do it again. Oh, gates are blasted here. open. The enemy gates are obliterated. Let's smash them. Oh. Overdid it a little bit. Whew, thank God. I don't want to set this whole city on fire. Uh, let's uh, let's zoom ourselves out and let's put some fire on the enemy. Let's soften them up a little bit. The archers. Let's move them all up in one group here. There, that should do it. Got them on flame shot, so we'll freak those horses out. And once we have softened them up, actually, you know what? I'm a little afraid of them coming right out fighting me while my men are on these ladders. So let's just breach. Let's 
throw these guys into a two-line thing so Andy can be kept at the back. I don't know how to do that. Moving up the troops. Nice and slow and steady. See if we can spot our king. This crowd. I don't see him at the moment. Oh yeah, I'm not too worried about them. Let's just keep hammering these scout equite. Oh yeah, just obliterating them. Keep the archer fire back here. These guys all have their shields up. Maybe we can uh, actually start harassing these guys with the cav. Alright, and here it comes, guys. We're going over the wall. These cohorts are going to make for some tough fighting. I'm not so worried about the exploratory here. Um. Oh yeah, this is going to be rough. We're going to have to be quick to flank them. I'll oh, right into a meat grinder. Jeez, I'm a little worried about this. Let's move King Andy's guys right up to the gate here. How's the fighting going? A little cinematic mode for you guys. Alright, it's going pretty good. For a screenshot there. All right, troops, march on the cohorts. All right, and we're just pushing in with wood runners, archers. Well, let's not hurt ourselves here. Let's keep your fire on there. Uh, let's. Uh, drop this and let's move these troops up because if we keep firing these explosive cannon or uh, catapult shots we're going to do unnecessary damage to the city look at that fire shot we are just obliterating these horse good luck getting a rear charge on this man let's line up some spears just in case oh no we don't have to keep pushing in guys Where's King Andy? Leading a glorious assault? Come on, where are you at, bro? Let's take it to them here. What are we doing? Oh, yeah. Listen to our men. We're just shouting them down. Oh, those horse are still active. I don't like this. Let's keep him on the run. Let's uh, let's have these mercenary Oniger men get up in the front row because if anybody's gonna die, it ought to be them, costing me a thousand a turn. Which I mean, it's worth it. They blasted down the gates, and I did most of the work. Uh, perfect aim, you know what I'm saying? So let's just form ourselves up right in the center here. Give these horse something to run from. Oh, we're gonna charge. Pause. Oh, okay. Pause. Little cheaty, I know. King Andy has the special ability. Who are they gonna hit the hardest? You guys? Yeah. Cast it on there. And uh, we'll go back to action so that these guys are ready. Oh, we didn't even have to deal with a charge. Get the spears right on those horse. That's what spears are made for, man. Um, and then, as for you guys, I don't think anybody's on fire at will. So, if we move on up. Use our spears here. 
put together a secondary force here, a second line. We'll throw you guys into a dual line. If that'll work. I don't think it will. And archers move on up. I'm a little worried about getting anybody unnecessarily killed. So let's get the, the horse up. Actually, you know what? I'm going to leave the horse on the outside of the city. They're raiders. They're going to burn the shite out of it if I let them in. And I plan on keeping this for myself. So I was... Oh, why don't I... Alright, why don't I pull a couple units of wood runners out. Throw you guys into shield wall and have you march on this gate. No, no, break it down. Just take it over. With the shield wall active. Alright. What are you guys doing? I told you to get the heck up here. You're the first line of defense. Actually, the spears are probably going to get charged. Um, we'll throw another wood runner over here in shield wall. Or maybe like that, just to protect himself from the, uh, the towers. And they are sallying out. Okay. Uh, these spears are taking a charge. Let's get a little ham hammer and anvil action going here. I'll line you guys up and we'll hit you with a hard charge. Once those spears get into the battle, I want you guys to charge these guys. Well, actually, let's uh, let's get them from behind. A little sandwich effect. Yeah, I mean that obviously cavalry would be useful in this situation, but I honestly do not want to risk them burning down the whole city. We're already doing it. Why are we burning down the city? Who's got the raider trait? You guys? No. To raider. See, they burn. They burn things down. I don't get why the whole city's burning down. I guess we got fire shot archers in here. Uh, speaking of, let's just launch a little bit in there. We'll get all our wood runners to put their shields up, and for you guys. Okay, victory. Uh. God, we're getting obliterated over here, aren't we? Which one? Oh, they're in decent shape. Let's move away. King Andy, charge in. Let's just make sure we kill them. Hold your damn fire, archers. Let's see the killing blow of old Firmus here. Where's the king? Can you see? There he is. There's Andy's owl horn helmet there. See that? There's the man himself. And the Cambogios in a potential glorious final battle. Before he succumbs to the death by natural causes. God, the game noise is loud right now, man. I want this unit obliterated. There's one man left. That's it. Do we have to worry about these victory points? If so, no. I mean, the battle's ours. Another glorious victory for me. A fine total war commander and my Celtic High King and Cambogios. Saving that just in case I have any recording issues, guys. Save succeeded. End the battle. Uh, axe to the head. Oh, look at that. Blood and gore pack, baby. Uh, blood and burning. Oh, it's glitching out a little bit. But look at that. The man the man who who so loves his, his axe uh, has used it to best firmness. Uh, we have to get some looting and occupying done against the Romans. Because uh, I don't didn't want to do it to the Caledonians and I won't want to do it to the Abdanians. So maybe we'll do it here uh, in Saguntum if that's where we go next. So I'll just do the oh, I don't wanna I don't wanna do this. Is this bad for the city? Screw it. Let's do it. All right, guys. So let's have a look at our Taken City. We'll worry about repairs, conversions, and what to build here next turn. As well, will we worry about uh, Andy? The only thing I'm definitely going to do, disband that. Uh, if you can see. Oh, is that the upkeep? Ooh, maybe not. 
I've seen that be like as high as a thousand in the past. Maybe Andy's got some good uh, good bonuses for no, he doesn't, not at all. His upkeep costs two percent. That's like seventy five percent off. You know, new egg shell shocker deal or whatever. Uh, so we'll keep them then. And I don't want to combine because these guys have got some experience. These guys are upgradable now. Celtic Spearman and King Andy right there. Only a few casualties. I should mention King Andy has got uh, some bonuses. We've leveled up. I'm not sure whether, it'll, I guess we just improve these levies. You know what? I'd like to get our, our income per turn a little higher first. Until, we're not going to need them for a bit. Uh, so let's look. Army traditions. I like going down the left side. I'm going to hit up Wardens of the Tribe, which gives us some integrity uh, when we're at home. And then I'm working towards this, this lower upkeep costs, the higher replenishment. So let's unlock Domestic Devotion, which means a dedication to their family and their gods. More growth, more wealth, all good in the hood. So that's it for that. But Andy is personally better. Now, like I said, he's going to die soon. Uh, so this doesn't matter too much, but the question is, what kind of a man do we want him to be? Uh, he will be leading the attack as long as we can let him. So perhaps more zeal. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that's pretty good. Let's, uh, let's zeal him up. Uh, another wolf. And then um, we do have some solid archers. But the infantry is really what we're all about. So let's go with that. We got this sick line of uh, Celtic woodies here. And uh, and a couple of nice spears that we'll be upgrading. So let's make this man an infantry commander. At the ripe age of 58, uh, his, t his days are numbered. But uh, while we've got him here, let's make the most of it. Uh, I cheated, I suppose you could say, and uh, accidentally... Uh, made the Olam read better. I'd like to bring him into the family. Uh, we've got no grandchildren. If he were to die today, uh, there's only one person left in the line, and that's Cam. Uh, and I guess Sedge would be his heir, uh, an illegitimate heir at that. So I don't know what we'd do in that situation. I say we bring in the Re, or attempt to bring in the Re. So adopt, and uh, you know we're going to need a future governor now that we've got Aboricum taken. Uh, I want to make it Sedge, which means uh, let's make him the governor. And then I think making him a companion would be wise because now uh, the companion gives you bonuses to personal influence gaining situations, um, recruitment cost, wealth, whatever. Uh, recruitment cost isn't that useful, but I say we throw Sedge in here, spend those influence points and help him earn some more so that we can get him a wife when he's a little bit older. He's only 23, so no biggie. This is so expensive. Adopting someone that if this doesn't go through, we're just going to lose control because I don't have a way to guarantee Sedge getting in. But whatever. He's a companion. Uh, Cam's doing good. He's a companion. Um, Abora comes a mess, but we'll deal with that next turn. We'll worry about repairs, conversions, whatever. Uh, the big question for next turn, and I'd love to hear your, your advice, let me know what you're thinking, guys. Lindum, Saguntium. Saguntium lets us build a navy, which means potentially backstabbing. The Abdanians, Lindum, both cities are kind of a mess. I mean, negative 96, that is ugly. Um, Lindum is the gateway to the south. Eventually, we'll take both of these. The goal is to unite Britannia. Uh, five, six cities left. We've got three under our belt. So we are one-third of the way there. Liking it. Uh, so let me know what you think, guys. Where do we go from here? But we've got Saguntium. We've got Wyndham. Your choice where to go next. Hit me up in the comments. All right, guys. That does it for episode two uh, in our campaign as the Picts to unite under Britannia. Thank you for watching, geeks. And I will see you in episode three.